Miss Deborah Ann Molitor, Miss South Dakota. It's about 1,300 miles from Atlantic City, New Jersey, to Vermilion, South Dakota. But that is really where our story begins. Vermilion is the setting for the University of South Dakota's beautiful tree-lined campus in the very heart of the town. New buildings crowd the old as the university expands its facilities to accommodate the growing student body, now well over 4,000. During the 1965-66 school year, Deborah Ann Molitor was a freshman at the university. Popular and a good student, Debbie participated in many campus activities and enjoyed meeting friends between classes at the new student union building. Or playing a good game of tennis. Swimming is one of Debbie's favorite sports, and she enjoyed it year-round at the indoor pool. Debbie enjoyed her studies and the social life at college, but for financial reasons, it was doubtful that she would be able to return for her sophomore year. Seventy miles from the University of South Dakota, near the Missouri River, a monument marks one of the camping grounds used by the Lewis and Clark expedition up the Missouri River in 1804. This represents the major historical monument of Onawa, Iowa, a small, quiet, midwestern town with a main street once called the widest in the world is the hometown of Debbie Molitor. Debbie and her mother, Mrs. Howard Molitor, live on the second floor of this little house in Onawa. Debbie's father died in 1960. Debbie and her mother received benefits under his social security account. The benefits ended when Debbie became 18. During the summer, after her freshman year, Debbie worked as a nurse's aide at Burgess Memorial Hospital, trying to earn enough money to continue her college education. But the possibility of saving enough money seemed remote. Then, suddenly, things began to happen. A bowling companion of Debbie's mother had a son receiving student benefits from Social Security because of the death of the father. The friend suggested that Debbie, too, might be eligible for student benefits and advised her to call the nearest Social Security office in Sioux City, Iowa. Mr. William Stockton, Jr., the field representative, on learning that it would be difficult for Debbie and her mother to visit the district office, arranged to see them at their house. Social Security field representatives go where they are needed, when they are needed. I have Debbie's application with me today. I did have one question in regard to the application. Does uh, Debbie work? No, Debbie doesn't work. Why is it that she has to reapply after having already received benefits? Her benefits were terminated when she was 18 years old. Also, since she wanted Debbie to get the benefits herself, she had to make her own application. As you understand, she must continue in school full-time and be unmarried if she is to receive these benefits between age 18 and 22. If a student loses the support of a parent because of the parent's retirement, disability, or death, Social Security can pay monthly benefits to help the students stay in school until age 22. Debbie's application for benefits was submitted. Then another important event happened. Debbie was asked to enter the Miss South Dakota pageant. There was much excitement on campus and at Debbie's home as she prepared for the contest. Mrs. Molitor helped with the fitting of the gown. Deborah Ann Molitor won and was crowned Miss South Dakota. Next stop, Atlantic City and the Miss America pageant. This was a truly thrilling moment for Debbie. Many of the contestants in the Miss America pageant have gone on to fame and fortune. The moment they arrive in Atlantic City, the young ladies are caught up in a whirlwind of activity. From meeting the press, to rehearsals, 
to clothes fittings, to luncheons, to interviews. This is Donna Axum, Miss America of 1964, and we're here at rehearsals for the Miss America pageant of 1966. And standing with me is Miss Debbie Molitor, Miss South Dakota for 1966. Debbie, you attend college, do you not? Yes, I do at the University of South Dakota in Vermillion. Vermillion. And you received a $1,000 scholarship for becoming Miss South Dakota, and you're using this scholarship to continue your education. I certainly am. I'll be a sophomore this coming year. You have a talent, as all Miss America contestants do, and you'll be exhibiting that talent. Could you tell us what it is? Well, I will be singing um, an original, not an original number, but original coordination of two numbers from The Sound of Music. You'll be singing in talent competition, but I understand that you're majoring in education. Is that right? Uh, yes, I am, for all practical purposes, speech education and dramatics training. Fine. You're also receiving other benefits that few Americans know about. Could you tell me about the Social Security benefits that are available to college-age students? Well, um, I have actually not received my Social Security benefits yet, but we have applied, and I'm sure that they will be a great deal of help uh, for myself as well as the rest of the college students who have lost a parent and need the money for their education. Fine. We've been speaking with Miss Debbie Molitor, Miss South Dakota for 1966, and a contestant in the Miss America pageant in Atlantic City. And now, the night they've been waiting for, as Burt Parks introduces last year's Miss America. Runway literally sparkles with glamour as the girls display their evening gowns. She may turn out to be the queen of the young ladies also exhibit their particular talents. Some dance, some sing, some act. Those judged the most talented in their specialty are awarded a trophy and a $1,000 scholarship. She took the town by storm with her. All bathing suits still play a role, but no longer are the contestants just bathing beauties. What is important is the combination of talent, poise, and beauty. Those who operate the pageant are aware of the importance of education in the development of the abilities of the young contestants. That is why the principal awards are college scholarships. Now the pageant is nearing its close for another year. Debbie didn't win, but she had the dream that millions of girls dream, and memories that will live forever. As she starts her sophomore year at the University of South Dakota, Debbie realizes that education is the most important thing in her life at this time. Her social security benefits have now started, these benefits, along with her $1,000 scholarship, will help her reach her goal as a candidate for a master's degree in education. Students approaching 18 should get in touch with their social security office so that benefits they are now receiving will not be stopped. Or, if Social Security benefits ended at 18, they may now be resumed while the student is a full-time student, under 22, and unmarried. 